Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! <laughs>
Are you ready, kids? <laughs> I can't hear you. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, simps. Is that the new intro? And virgins. <laughs> and welcome back to Crown's magical Doom Cave. The Doom Cave is back, baby. And welcome back to the Air Crown Crypto channel. It is a lovely morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. It's nice and dark and very slippery outside as well, which is exactly re <laughs> reminiscent of this market right now. And I would like to wish you a nice and happy and healthy start to this new week of new opportunities, perhaps if you still let it be because Bitcoin still ranging on the lows. And we have a nice little economic driver coming in on Wednesday as well in lieu with our talks yesterday with Mr. Ted Talks Macro. Actually, really, 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 really good guy. Highly recommend him. Of course, on Twitter is where operates most he also has a youtube as well and we had a nice little video yesterday discussing exactly that so with that in mind today we're going to be focusing on short-term time frames and a bit of the high term time frames as well it doesn't hurt to uh, to follow up on that but you know what we start to see over here you know what we start to fucking see we start to see that bitcoin dominance going up oh man that's exactly what you expect to see when things do actually officially turn down anyways with that in mind i do want to say a good and heartfelt uh welcome to everyone in the uh in the very early morning right now I see 730 people watching which is insane because it is uh well it's uh it's a little bit of a quiet morning i do expect especially over a weekend just range of about a 1500 bucks or so but ultimately, I do want to say a massive thing for Jonah in it. We got 204 likes on the video as well, which is made, which is which is just perfect, which is just fucking perfect, man. We've taken a little bit of a downturn on that. We've taken a little bit of a downturn on the likes, but it's okay. Anyways, uh, either which way, I see Mr. Luke Baden. What's up, brother? Yeah, man, I really, 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 really enjoyed his presence. He is, uh, he's just, he's so on point. He's so sharp with the macro and understanding a lot of the fundamental side of the fundamentals that actually matter, right? The fundamentals of the market that actually matter, which mostly boil down to the Fed, right? But uh, but yeah, man, really enjoyed that. Really fucking enjoyed that. What's up, Chris Kruger? What's up, nice kitty? Good to see you. It's been a long time. Love that. Love that avatar as well. Crypto Chrissy, good morning to you as well. Herculano. Man, your name is Herculano? That is a fucking badass name, dude. Holy shit. That's amazing, man. For real. Danny Reyes, good morning to you as well. Ricky O, there he is. I think we got Nikki Page. What's up, Nikki Page? Our lovely moderators are here. Rocky G is... Who else is here? Philosophian, I see you, brother. Kobus, there he is as well. Hold on, just scrolling back up over here so I can make sure that I get a few other familiar faces. Randy Fox, there he is as well. And uh, I think that's it, actually. That's our mod squad for today. Nice and uh, nice and tight. And Elsa, she's here as well. <laughs> Andy, <laughs> Megan, Floyd Chief, there he is. Lambo Rambo, a lovely name. Winston, Anthony, uh, Anthony Waldman. Jack, there he is. What's up, Mr. Jack? Life is fun. Sometimes, sometimes it is, sir. Sometimes it is. By the way, before we get into this one, I need to take a sip of this coffee. So, uno momento. And then also, and then also, I want to ask if there's any people who are living in the UAE right now, if you're living in Dubai, if you're living in the UAE, could you please tell Elsa that there are being missiles fired into your country and that might not be the wisest decision to go and visit there in like a week from now, which <laughs> I'm trying to convince her, which ultimately... I don't actually know how serious the situation is, but uh, but to, to give you a bit of a color on it, uh, Elsa loves Dubai, and uh, and well, it was, her, it was her birthday about a month ago, so I decided to buy her a nice little trip to Dubai. Well, alongside myself as well. <laughs> and now I'm seeing all this attacks and shit on them. Not so confident in this one, man. Drone striking and shit. I don't want nothing to do with that. But who knows? Who knows what actually is going on over there? You never know. You never know. Arena from Denmark. Hey, nice. Not bad. We are kind of neighbors, kind of, in the Nordic countries over here. We're over here in Finland. Jamie, fucking buy the dip. Beautiful man. Hashtag no travel. Yeah, man, I'm thinking we might switch that trip up to Portugal instead. <laughs> but <laughs> bit mod crypto. There's a bit squad in the house. Holy fucking moly, man. G uh, got Taylor. What's up, brother? And Tani. <laughs> yeah, best time to visit the UAE now. Yeah, great fucking timing, man. Great fucking timing. Anyways, uh, okay, so I'm just thinking, you know, before we get into this, how do I want to uh, formulate this whole damn conversation right here? Um, well, I think first things first, man. I need to polish off a little bit more of this damn coffee over here. Show some love. Smash the likes, everyone. It takes no effort. It uh, it would it would very much help. It's not, uh, it's of course not required as well. I want it to be organic as always, you know. It's better when people are compelled by their own efforts rather than me like being like hey man don't forget to like and subscribe moving those likes up bro i want to see them get up to 1000 no 2000 5000 10000 yeah i will <laughs> my favorite one is like when people will uh they'll start their stream and then they'll be like guys before we get into this content though i need some more likes i need some more likes in this video it's like <laughs> i'm not starting until we get a thousand likes like what the fuck <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, or, or some marketing like if you don't like you will be poor and you not wag me no fucking wag me for you sirs and sirs oh man you gotta love the real trading week over here you gotta love the real trading week <laughs> so so we shouldn't spring break to the uae i'm not so sure about that man i'm not so sure about that it's uh it's kind of concerning you know it's elsa's like yeah we should still go it's not a big deal it's only in abu dhabi not in dubai i'm like like how does that make things better like are you fucking crazy it's not too far away to just angle those missiles over there once they realize it's probably easier target as well and <laughs> I'm a drama queen. Yes, I'm also not a get blown up by missile queen as well. Jesus fucking Christ. Don't you realize they can just like shoot down the airplane as we fly on over and it's like, <laughs> it's not even, no one's even gonna care. It's just, it's gonna be another news piece just washed on over and Elsa's gonna be like, you know what? When I get buried, I hope they show my nails. So make sure that my nails are in front of my body when I'm buried. It's like, what the fuck? You're going to be dead. You're going to be dead, actually. <laughs> it's like fucking hell, man. Gen B says it's uh, it's an hour and a half flight from uh, to to Dubai from Abu Dhabi. Really? It, can it really be that long? I think it's like that far by car or something. Yeah. <laughs> it says Dubai. I don't know about that. <laughs> Apu Dhabi says Chef Rojo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God damn, man. UAE has a very advanced uh, military system, says Gen B. You sound like a UAE shell, but uh, you know what? <laughs> if it makes me feel more more comfortable going there, I'll go. We've we've gone before. It's a very it's it's a very visually pleasing place, no doubt about that. But uh, I'm also trying to not get you know rocketed to death. That that's also a, a part of my concerns as well. Uh, yeah, it's an hour drive, says Hani. Yeah, so it's uh it can't you know it can't be that that far by plane then, can it? Any plans to go back to bring back testnet? Not really, man. I'm having my hands full uh, trading my own accounts right now. This is these are the times where I actually make probably the most. Uh, honestly, man, throughout the year, it's really like about maybe 10% of the year where I probably put in 80 to 90% of my trade uh, trades, and this is going to be one of them just because it's one of the more volatile periods. So whenever we see like daily BBWP get down, let's say below about 10 percentile or so, the week to, to sorry the the next like one to four weeks following that period, once you get expansion are typically like the week the weeks where i actually am you know quite uh, strapped to my desk um and then also now with bitcoin you know trading out numbers like this i mean even on kind of a slow day you can still have like a multi-thousand dollar range which you know it's just i, I can't really like i can't bring myself to care about fucking testnet anymore when there's just so much opportunity right now man it's been a very it's been a very nice uh last few weeks here especially after the sort of boring ish i would say december december didn't really have too many trades for myself um yeah, exactly, Brian Price. And, and I imagine that most traders here, you know, you'd probably agree with that in the sense that, you know, look, it, it's it's always nicer for Bitcoin to go up, obviously, especially for the hodlers. And and yes, it, it is easier to trade an upside market, typically speaking. You know, you can just kind of sit on your hands for the most part. But uh, but at the end of the day, man, you know, if you are going to, you know, if you are going to do it as living, you got to be able to survive all markets because you can't just be reliant on one market that only goes up. Right. Anyways, Jen, Jen, Jen is pretty confident that it's safe. All right. Jen, do you live there? Do you live there? Uh, maybe you can get in contact with uh, with Elsa. Hopefully, you have like some inside information because uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to avoid this conflict. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to avoid this conflict. Don't become the new target. I might see you in Portugal. Actually, uh, out, do you live in Portugal? Fucking by the dip. Because I'm I'm legitimately considering uh, buying property there. I really really like what I see, and uh, it actually looks incredibly similar to like California style, but not with the California bullshit. I think, or at least hopefully not. And I saw that they also completely, uh, or I don't know if they completely, but they got rid of most of their restrictions as well. So I think that's uh, that's you know that's a good sign. It's actually very cool to see a lot of countries uh, let that go as well. It's just it's nice to see that humanity's starting to spring back up, and then we're gonna have a war across on the other side. It's either UAE and Yemen or. Or, or Ukraine and Russia. So it's like from one thing on to the next, right? All right, sweet. I am, uh, I am, of course, taking way too much time right here. I see a really good question, though. Megan Gomes says, Crown, is it possible to make money day trading in the bear market? Absolutely, yes. Um, you know, at, well, yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it's possible to make money in any market. The question is, what is your edge during that time? So during more downside markets, I employ a different type of edge um, in comparison to just mostly straight upside markets. In straight upside markets, I like to trade a lot more of uh, trend styles and in you know I like to imply four hour time frame and higher 
when things are more downside angled i like to be more lower term time frame and i like to play uh you know and i like to play like very easy but short-term continuation moves that's kind of my that's kind of where my edge is for the most part um anyways uh we're all satoshi says learning tons from the neophyte program awesome man uh looking forward to next month <laughs> that's awesome man i'm glad to hear that i'm very very glad to hear that um fucking by the dip says no but was but i was going to visit there soon yeah man um it seems it, it really seems like an amazing place actually uh with a lot of things going for it all right let me just get one more sippy sip here then we'll get on to bitcoin and then we'll get into the comment section as well i'm going to turn off the alerts for right now best place to live is morocco if you have money you'll be you'll live there better than the king really Elsa says no. She has a friend who was dating a Moroccan, uh, Moroccan guy, and there's just like some, or is dating a Moroccan guy, and like there's all these issues with like just getting into the country and shit. Like apparently, uh, she, he cannot come here to visit her in Finland. Um, so it's like a whole, you know, it's a whole issue. For, I mean, it kind of sucks for them, obviously. Anyways. By the way, I went to a I went to a protest over the weekend uh, for the restrictions here in Finland, and I had no idea what was going on because it's all in fucking Finnish. <laughs> I just just heard people yelling on like a loudspeaker, I'm like "What is it? What's this?" <laughs> I have no fucking idea. So I get like my phone out, and there's a Google translator just trying to like pick up the words from the guy speaking. And I'm I'm like, I think he's talking about what I think he's talking about. Who the hell knows though? All right, so. Let's get into it here with Bitcoin. Apologies for the uh, for for the waiting right there, but there are plenty of se uh, several major major things to be um, following up on here, especially with the new weekly closure for CM or sorry, not just CME, but spot price action as well, which is really going to set in the buys for this next week or two to come. And ultimately, we do have a big, 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 big catalyst on Wednesday. That is. An economic event to reference our talks with uh, with Ted from Ted Talks Macro, and that could definitely play into a short and medium term uh, move in this case, which we're going to cover up soon enough. But I want to, uh, I really want to kind of tie this all into what the weekly is doing right now. So first things first, let's talk about the most important thing, the one thing that's really been saving uh, us from this market in the sense that it's time to be cautious, and that of course is the global open interest. It's actually ticked up in the last uh, forty, or sorry, thirty six hours now. We saw it got all the way down to, I believe just below 10 billion with a B, about 9.8 billion or so, now taking up a little bit just above 10 billion again. So people are once again buying the dip on fucking leverage, which is fair enough. And I understand that there is a counterpoint to this in the sense that, you know, the open interest should naturally go higher, one, for a maturing asset, but also two, and I picked up this point from Mr. Ari David, I believe, uh, uh, I believe he's, uh, and he's very, very sharp. I really, really like him as well. Um, from uh, I think he's like block stream or something uh, block tower whatever the hell they're all block right they're all they're all fucking block but basically it does make sense that uh, you know a lot of these guys will not get liquidated simply because what they're doing in, in a professional sense what what a professional investor is likely doing during this time is they're probably spot long from you know about half a year to a year ago uh, from way lower and what they're doing is is they're using their margin accounts they're using their leverage to short against that spot position in order to protect their dollar value of course on their position so they're probably not in any way shape or form uh you know in, in 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 danger of getting liquidated but we still want to see that come down because simply put when they do take their shorts off and essentially you know buy once again that means that they're going to have big upside exposure presumably speaking so that would be a good indication of when the low is so kind of working this all into my theory that we've been going off for the past like i think about two months now uh i do expect it to come lower before we do have a full-on reset and that's going to be my big indication that that, hey, correction's over. It's safe again for at least a pretty big move to the upside. You know, we're probably talking about a $10,000 move or so. Um, and then we get to play into the whole theory of, or not the whole theory of, but basically is where do we find the next, you know, major potential lower high? If we get something like that, then long-term bearish. If not, well, then we have, uh, then we probably have some fun maybe around the end of the year. Anyways, with that in mind, I also want to bring up this over here with the uh, global liquidations. You can see again over the weekend, or sorry, not over the weekend, but uh, into the end of last week when we really saw the major dump accelerate right here. And by the way, there's a new update on the app that allows you to uh, much easier uh, navigate this pain right here by the way major shout out to mournfall for that you fucking beautiful bastard you anyways uh you can see you know the liquidation party was really not anything major to be spoken about certainly not anything comparable to what we saw over the summer in may not even comparable to what we saw back on over here in september on that washout from 53 down to forty thousand bucks so i do think that this could still very easily take another leg lower over the next week or two on top of that we do see that the leverage ratio is you know still as high as ever basically but 
but we do kind of expect it to be up there. It's not a humongous issue. Uh, and then, uh, and then, and then the funny rates a little bit more on the bullish side here as well, in the sense that we could very easily see a short or medium term rally, kind of around from this current region where Bitcoin's at. Maybe after one more swipe of the lows, but ultimately it is it is getting a little bit more negative right here. Negative not point one essentially. It's I mean it's just one tick below that. So close enough is close enough. If we go into the hourly data feed. It's actually uh, nowhere near that on the hourly data feed, which is uh, a little bit less comfort inducing, I suppose. But ultimately, it has been consistently negative over the last 48 hours or so. So. You know, I do think that Bitcoin could very easily bounce uh, around maybe Tuesday, Wednesday or so, uh, assuming that the economic drivers are going to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, forgiving. In this, in this case, we do have uh, Jerome Powell speaking again, and uh, I imagine that after the destruction in markets over the past, um, you know, over the past uh, week, week and a half now, especially, he might be a little bit more on the side of forgiving because, well, they do, you know, they do typically want to sustain uh, price levels, um, for, you know, as that as that was once one of their mandates. Now their mandates uh, have to do mostly with inflation. So anyways, I'm going to get off that topic right now. And of course, we need to talk about the tangible and verifiable levels on Bitcoin, where these where these ideas become, you know, relate uh, become actionable, essentially. And Bitcoin, as far as the ranges go, even on the short term timeframes, very much unchanged in the last, uh, well, in the last basically uh, one, two, three, four days now, going back to the 21st of January, since we got into this bottom side range right here, still need to see an hourly closure above the top side of this range, that being about 37,000 bucks. And then, yes, I would be looking for short term rallies up somewhere between about 38.5, perhaps even as much as 39.3 or so. I actually should put in a nice little blue box right around there as well. Something like this is what I'd be looking for if that area is taken out, even on an hourly closure, even on an hourly closure right here. Until then, though, you know, Bitcoin kind of hanging on the lows isn't really, um, you know, isn't really like a strand of strength, to be quite honest with you. And of course, we should go over the weekly as well, of which the weekly had a clean and clear closure below the green 55. And now the green 55 does have a downside slope. So I really lean into this for more long term direction, of course. And if you are familiar with Fibbo Swanee, who I'm a humongous fan of, and he is a trusted friend of this channel as well, he typically uses three closures above or below a major, uh, you know, a major area. In this case, that's going to be the 55. Uh, as a signal of you know market direction and in this case you know that would also kind of be linked to that as well um, so of course you know long term where is bitcoin's big bases and where would i be expecting you know humongous bounces from regardless of whether you're super bearish or super bullish well one of them is actually kind of right uh right here although i wouldn't say it's like a humongous rally uh, i do think that best bitcoin would do to uh do to this week to the upside would be maybe like 39 to maybe forty thousand bucks i think that's best case scenario this week uh but ultimately i do think that bitcoin very likely does have a little bit lower before it's all said and done. Why is that? Well, or, 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 or essentially, where is that? That's just coming in from your summer and January of last year basis right here, of which I'll put in a nice bl uh, big blue box territory, which we'll do right there. And, uh, and at that point, I'd be expecting, you know, weekly bounces. But as of right now, of course, we are within the midst of, of several things, in fact. So let me go back on over to this chart. It's a little bit, uh, has a little more history right here. You know, we are on the monthly 21 exponential moving average and also on the monthly, of course, 20 simple moving average right here. Uh, just ignore that in the bottom for right now. We're going to get to that a little bit, <laughs> a little bit right here. But of course, you know, these are areas where you're going to see a lot of shorts closing just by the, uh, just by, you know, the way that, I mean, just, just by the simple fact that they're taking fucking profit, you know? <laughs> That's that's the way that they're uh, a lot of the time going to be. Uh, what's it called? Um Oh my God, the inputs in, you know, in, you know, in these algos, typically speaking, you know, if they're going to be shorting into this area right here, they're very likely going to be buying this area right here simply to close their positions and lock in some profits. Maybe they still keep some downside exposure, but at least some should, you know, very likely does get closed. But ultimately, um, this is, all, or sorry, also, this is, of course, the quarterly area as well. And, uh, and that is your quarterly backfill from back on over here. And remember, we've been pretty, uh, sorry, we were pretty loud about this over the summer coming into September Q4. Once we saw this reversal off of the summer lows, every quarterly reversal has been back tested on the open since the eternity of time for Bitcoin. Now, I think all of these are pretty self explanatory. The only one that is not would be this one over here from the macro cycle lows in 2019 at about 3,100. But we did see that back tested about a year later, actually, in, uh, on the flu dump, in fact, on the flu dump right here. So, uh, so with that in mind, you know, I do still think that this is more likely to be a bouncy area, short term, medium term. But I do think that out upside is very much capped. So I would only look at this as a verified bounce for the short 
short term implied. Again, if you do see Bitcoin close basically above yesterday's little spike high right here, it would probably do it for me. Um, I don't necessarily think that I need to wait for Bitcoin to close above 37. Probably just above 36.5 is going to be good enough anyways. And then, yes, I would be looking for Bitcoin to put in a rally somewhere back around here into this uh, little bit less than thousand dollar range between about 38.5 to 39.3. Ultimately, though, I again, I want to be very, 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 very clear in saying this. Um, I do not think that Bitcoin uh, is very unlikely to reverse this week, if at all. <laughs> um, and also, more importantly, let me get rid of this. That is not pertinent to this conversation. But ultimately, um, you know, I, you know, at, you know, at minimum, I would be looking for, uh, you know, at, at minimum, I'd be looking for a range between about 39, uh, 39.3 and kind of where we're at right now at about 39, uh, sorry, 35,000 bucks. Um, I think that's kind of best case scenario for this week for what it's worth. Um, now, what would I constitute as a break of the downside range? We can go back down here into the hourly. I do think that this would be okay to do on an hourly, although a higher term time frame would induce a lot more confidence with calling continuation, but basically 34,000 bucks or this wick low that you saw over the weekend, I believe it was, the 27th. 2nd of January. So that was two days ago, which is a low of 33,911. That's on Bybit. Let me just see what the index has over here. A little bit higher than that, actually 34,199. I imagine that's probably going to be a little bit of a, you know, you know, the better way of doing it essentially. But ultimately, if we do see that level close below, maybe even on an hourly, but probably, you know, probably more like a full hour to uh, to anything above that, then I would be looking for continuation um, officially to the CME gap, uh, the bottom end of the CME gap right here, fulfill the old LARP line, uh, the old LARP lines right there, somewhere right around about $32,000, or sorry, as low as about $32,000, and uh, perhaps as high as about, you know, thirty three five or so again on CME, because remember, CME did not play at that same move that we saw over the weekend for Bitcoin. And uh, right now, CME is just looking, well, it's looking kind of sad, actually, <laughs> is what it's looking like. So ultimately, uh, you know, I do want to be, uh, I do want to be a little more on the, uh, you know, on the defensive side. But of course, on Tuesday, Wednesday, especially once, uh, once, once Jay Powell gets back on the microphone again, you know, that's where you might actually see a little bit of a, a little bit of a counter trend move right here. But again, understand that, you know, 39.3 to 39.5, I, I do think is best case scenario for the up side uh, on a week like this. Anyways, let's go over here to momentum oscillators and let's talk about uh, short term first. And this is, you know, again, not very confidence inducing to be quite honest with you on the full hour. We do see the full hour is essentially having a bit of a reset right here. But whilst having a reset on four hour momentum within the context of a downtrend and still not even breaking out of the short term time frame range highs, uh, that's, you know, that that is a bearish reset. And you can obviously uh, fit in a nice little regression right here between the last couple of highs coming in from the 12 of January, actually, more recently in the 20th of January before that last little move down. And then, of course, that would allow for, you know, a little bit of a move up here. But again, if we do see Bitcoin close anywhere below 34.830 on CME, that will force it back down again. That would be a good early indication of another breakdown coming to those lower levels. Then the question is, does Bitcoin break below its uh, its its weekend lows? If it does, looking somewhere between about 32 to 33, let's say, and then very likely a bounce there and then come back to it after that. I'd really like to just, you know, melt this market down into one leg at a time. I would not necessarily uh, call like a full on move down to $30,000 or so base. But remember, we do have a technical target down there based off of uh, this formation, which maybe where did I put it? Where did I put this damn formation? Uh, hold on, let me find it really, really quickly here, or maybe not at all. I guess I, I guess I don't have it on my charts any longer. All right, well, whatever. Uh, Okay, well, fuck it, <laughs> and I'll just do it again. And in this case, you know, we do obviously have uh, one massive head and shoulders right here. And you know, it is a legitimate one. I mean, the volume center on this is proper. The say the the shape, size, smell, taste is all you know about right. And we could make an implied target based off this on the breakdown, and that would be pointed towards about thirty thousand bucks or so. So that is on the board. And until Bitcoin essentially gets back above the last daily lower high, which is still at forty four thousand bucks now, nothing's really changed right there. Just uh, the, you know, the same one as this guy right here that that we've been t speaking about basically since uh, second week of January. You know, that is active, and that is it, that is from a technical analysis perspective uh, relatable. So um, that target, you know, is is essentially or that that implied target is still very much on the board is what I'm trying to say uh, until, you know, that condition is essentially taken away. Anyways, uh, from the CME perspective, I do want to see what momentum uh, looks like from there. Full hour momentum will turn back up above 36,100. So that is a little bit more confidence inducing. CME showing a little bit more of a bouncy picture sh uh, on the short term first. Uh, hourly is going to swing back up above 35,315. And also for all the people asking, um, we actually did release this indicator on the uh, on on our app. I was going to say on TradingView. It is on TradingView, obviously, but it is uh, it is it is available through our app. I put up a video on it last night. 
um and uh well it's there for you if you so desire anyways 12 hour also wouldn't take too much for this one to flip back up 37,250. and daily is freshly down actually freshly down with volatility expanding here and will be remaining down below about 38,500 or so so short-term time frames could we see a bit of a bounce yes absolutely do we have a verification for that bounce yes absolutely above the uh above yesterday's high i think it was or was it this morning's high let me just double check here um this would be the 24th so actually this would be this morning for myself Anyways, that would be about 36,500. Even on an hourly close, pro probably does do it. At minimum, I would be looking for, you know, not much of a move higher to about 37,100 or so. If you want to play it by the book, you'd be waiting for a closure above there. And then, yes, I'd be looking for, uh, you know, a fill back into this region right here. And that would fulfill, you know, a bit of a short term time frame bounce. But I want to be very, 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 very deliberately uh, clear in stating this. As long as Bitcoin's below about 39,4 you know, I, I, I do think that's probably about the totality of a rally that you'll get for this week. Um, and even then getting above 39.4 is not relevant for the daily uh, at all. In fact, uh, what's relevant for the daily is the same is the same thing that's been relevant for the past two to three weeks now, which is the $44,000 level right here. Above there, things start to change around a little bit. That would be above the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement right here. But even then, you do still have to deal with kind of the uh, the traditional bull trappy area, which uh, as of right now, or sorry, not as of right now, but but uh, but as confirmed over the weekend, both CME and spot price action do have lower lows. So the weekly trend is in limbo right here. It's kind of similar to over the summer where we had a lower low ever so slightly right here. But after that, there is no lower high. So all good in the hood. In this case, we have a lower low yet again. We do not have a lower high just yet. So it's not a confirmed reversal. But at some point, you know, you're very likely going to see a rally, of course, or I mean, assuming that this asset doesn't completely die, something like this. And then the question is, do you bounce up somewhere into this region right here? Probably yes, uh, depending upon how low we get first. And then if you see a rejection right there and it confirms a lower high and comes back down, let's say below about 40,000 bucks, that's at the point where, you know, I'm going to get incredibly bearish. Uh, you're going to see crown from like 2018 once again rise and uh, and honestly i do enjoy trading that that type of a market more uh than what we've kind of been seeing recently the hopium is that you'll set in a higher low somewhere maybe above forty thousand bucks and then swing back around that would be beautiful you know you'd still have a slew of higher lows right here and that'd be amazing and that would be the bullish view but again that would likely imply a long time being taken here and i do want to represent the bearish side in you know in its in its totality because it, it does have a very strong case right now um not just trend which obviously all always does you know supersede anything else but if we go over here to the monthly on the trolling band chart guess what we do have monthly macd crossing uh, crossing down for the first time basically since when since june of 2018 and by the way before that we saw it cross down here in february of 2020 and before that we saw it cross down here in august of 2014 obviously there's no other iterations other than that because well uh it doesn't really have too much time to populate here and then also if we look at the pmar we can see that there have been several crosses one two three four both to the upside and the downside of this white moving average on it. And guess where those correlate with? Well, that correlates with this major upside market right here, this major downside market right here, this major downside market right here, and this major uh, upside market right here, alongside those MACD crosses as well. So you know, uh, and, and by the way, all of those MACD crosses were coming off of that first test of the white 20 simple, you know, kind of spent a little bit of time rallying from there, trying to, uh, you know, trying to put in a bit of a rally, but uh, but ultimately did fall through to the green 55 uh, over time. So I would also like to be on record as saying that, um, you know, I do think to the downside, worst case scenario is probably somewhere around 22 to 25,000 bucks on a monthly closing basis. Can we get wicks below to like 20 even? Probably yes, but I think a lot of people are looking for that. Do I think that Bitcoin goes lower than there on a higher term time frame closing basis very unlikely but i also want to show you this right here as well on the monthly stochastic momentum of which we're going to be freshly crossing down for the first time since for the first time actually since uh, april you know on that last move uh and also losing the uh, the bullish control zone which has not happened basically since uh March 2018 as well, with any sort of a monthly closure below 53,500. So that is going to be confirmed in about one week from today, actually, one week from today. So assuming that Bitcoin doesn't have a nearly $20,000 rally in the next seven, seven days, um, you know, we're going to see a lot of things turn down and we're going to see very extremely likely a move towards 30,000, uh, very likely a bounce there. And then the question is, you know, does Bitcoin reclaim any major areas coming into February, March? I would still obviously be open minded with that. But given the history of this, uh, you know, especially of these signals, um, 
it's lights out, man. Uh, no, sorry, I fucking hate, I, I absolutely fucking hate that uh, terminology, but you get what I'm saying, right? In the sense that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's gonna open up a more long-term bearish bias here, obviously. Anyways, um, you know, until, uh, int you know in, in, until we see all of that, I, I do still think that lower-term time is actually where a, lot of the, uh, where a lot of the action is right here. I'm curious to see if we have anything building up on the full hour right now. We do see, again, full hour jewel pointed up and actually getting the low rather well. But the problem is, is that, you know, with this one still having some upside, it's, 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 it's not surpassing any of the critical regions. So even in the lower-term time frames, I do think that... Uh, it is starting to look a little bit more like we might actually see one more leg down first to about 32. I want to see the validation of that. Again, please understand that all things spoken about on this channel come with the validation and invalidation conditions, but uh, hope, 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 hopefully I've been as crystal clear as possible to relate that topic. But here's the thing, man, you've seen BBWP contract throughout this little, you know, this little short term correction right here. It's not a bottoming signal. Uh, that is not a bottoming signal. Um, hourly is, uh, <laughs> hourly it looks like it's about to expand again and, and daily of course you know the daily bbwp very likely does uh get around or, or is going to be a great indication alongside open interest uh with calling the next major low but the problem is is that i really don't want to be even considering that bitcoin is on a major low until we at minimum see this close above 90 percentile and higher is better yes uh so the last time that we saw it close uh you know this this uh this high was coming off of where uh, sorry. Um, well, a lot of these were actually upside moves to be fair, but, uh, but the last time we saw it with a downside move was obviously over the summer in May right here, where it actually did hit 100 percentile, uh, for at least one or two closures and certainly spent many closures above 95 percentile. So that's kind of where I'd like to see it before I really start to uh, feel a lot more confident with calling, um, you know, at least a major low before probably like a 10% rally or so. But, uh, but for right now, we're not getting it just yet. And on top of that on daily RSI right here, again, uh, um, you know, we've we've almost never seen a major low in Bitcoin, except for one, except for one. And that would actually be on the flu dump back on over here from March 2020. But other than that, we've never seen a major low on Bitcoin and especially a macro low on Bitcoin without having at least two drives of bullish divergence on uh, on the daily. And to be quite fair, I mean, they almost always have three drives anyways as well on the macro lows. So in this case, uh, that would obviously imply a little bit lower. Um, again, RSI being this low, it can always go fucking lower. Like I've seen a lot of this shit on Twitter and fair enough, you know, I understand that people are, you know, they're just giving their opinions on things just like I am right here as well. Uh, but I see a lot of this stuff on Twitter, which I've learned in my, in, you know, in my trading behavior and my trading experience is just the wrong way to be looking at things. It's like RSI is low. The bro, did you see that RSI? Okay. The RSI has only been lower in the corona coronavirus dump times. And I just said the fucking C word. And you know what, bro? That means can't go lower. It's time to buy. That's right. It's time to do buy and get fucking missile striked into the fucking ground, man. It can always go lower. It can always go fucking lower. RSI can never, it, it can always go higher. It can always go lower. I can tell you that right off the fucking bat. And it's, you're really looking for divergence between momentum and trend. You're looking for divergence between momentum and trend on a fucking momentum oscillator in order to call, you know, at least a bounce. And in this case, uh, short term bounce, you know, is fine, but I don't think that we're seeing it just yet, man. Um, so uh, again, kind of wrapping up my thoughts here. I think best best Bitcoin does to the upside this uh, this week is probably about thirty nine thousand three hundred to thirty nine thousand five hundred. Maybe a wake up to forty thousand in like a crazy event. Like let's say on Wednesday, Jerome Powell gets on. He's like, yeah, we're actually not going to do any of these damn rate cuts. Okay, then you know you probably have something else completely going on that does change the uh, the structure, obviously. But I would not really incorporate uh, any macro change here at minimum until Bitcoin gets back to about forty four thousand bucks. That is your last lower high, and again, that has been the most simplistic way of looking at this asset for the past uh one two three months now and essentially all we've had to do is just follow the lower highs there is nothing really long-term bullish to be spoken about here as long as bitcoin is riding that and again that is forty-four thousand bucks right now so hopefully that was helpful i will uh, i'll leave it there for bitcoin and we'll get on over into the comments i need to turn this off and thank you for that nice one man uh let me grab my water over here because my coffee is cashed now and <laughs> here we go Randy's first. All right, let me see where Randy is. Uh, Randy is first. Yes. Uh, thoughts on Bitcoin monthly MACD? Uh, well, actually, we just went over that. <laughs> we just went over that. Uh, I mean, look, man, you know where I'm going to go with this one, right? Anytime that we've seen it have a downside cross, it's been 
well catastrophic for you know like the next year to come uh, uh, almost um if we go back like let's actually back test this together uh let's start off with this first one from august 2014. how long after that did it take to even just recover that same price level um it wasn't until well it wasn't until about here may 2016. jesus christ man almost uh two years later uh in fact um, what about over here in, of course, June 2018, we saw another downside cross. Where did it cross back up? That would be uh, right around here is where you did kind of recover that same price level. That was May 2019. So about a year right there, uh, getting a little bit better. Then we had, of course, the flu dump times right here. This one recovered rather quickly, just uh, one, two, three, four, 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 four or five months, I'd say. Um, and then once again, we're kind of having the same thing going on right here. Now, there is something that is a little bit different on this particular uh, iteration over here than the other prior ones, and it's not good. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's not good. The reason why I say this is because we actually do have bearish divergence on monthly MACD histogram. Now, I'm not a big fan of MACD histogram uh, bullish or bearish divergence or divergence at all from a MACD perspective, but I think it's worth calling out just because, well, why not, man? I mean, we are here. Uh, ultimately, if I don't see divergence on RSI or MFI, I don't typically care about it nor play or certainly, certainly don't play it. But here's the thing. I mean, obviously, we do have bearish divergence on monthly RSI. I would argue, however, that this is like this is not like a humongously uh, concerning drive. I mean, you really typically don't expect too much downside just based off of one drive like this. Again, in a, in a shallower region of the uh, bullish control zone in this case, but and we're already down to the 21, which would have been my like my max target anyways from something like that. Um, so, you know, I do want to push back on that statement a little bit. And then obviously MFI, do I even have it up here? I don't have it up right here, but uh, the MFI is actually uh, much more concerning. So let me just bring it up. It's on my fundamental chart. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's right here. And uh, the MFI has one, two, three drives. And this one's actually in the very critical zone, obviously. So uh, that's 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 potentially a problem. Um, that's a little bit of a problem. Hey, what what one is this right here? Oh, that's a 21. I want to put on a 55. There we go. All right, sweet. Um, cool. Yeah. All right, sweet. Uh, let me just scroll back up on over here. Elsa's already got them all. Uh, all lined up beautiful um <laughs> again thank you for the, thank you for that mr we are we're all satoshi uh let's see stefan milicevic says hello hello good sir what's up man can you juice luna um for our daily and weekly sure man uh i remember we looked at this one versus bitcoin last week i think it was maybe it was luna maybe it's something else uh similar to that but it was actually looking quite okay see what this one looks like right now on a daily and start here again hold it up relatively well which is what you do expect on something that's been showing relative strength for uh, about a year now or so let me actually lower this down a little bit right here and lower this down as well there we go um and let me just see what it looks like on a weekly as well um yeah, I mean, it, it does still look like it kind of wants to come down uh, here, too. The problem is, is that if Bitcoin does play at another downside move, Luna is very likely to follow as well. But you can see that there is relative strength. So any sort of a bounce on Bitcoin, like let's say uh, the bounce that we're speaking about on the short term time frames does get its validation. You're probably to see Luna pop back up um, maybe somewhere around about 80 bucks or so look okay but for right now you know is this looking like look looking like another lower high right here on the short-term time frames yes it is that does imply that we do have a bit of a short-term time frame base to be going off of in this case that's going to be right there uh, we could we could even just get rid of this one it's not really relevant for what we're looking at right now although you know it does kind of matter but ultimately uh above 71 dollars even on a four-hour closure yeah i would be looking for uh another move up almost ten dollars from uh 78 to 80 dollars or so um until then higher term time frames are still looking better in comparison to most but Look, it, you know, if, if if Bitcoin dumps out here, I mean, you do kind of have one of these going on now, don't you? And you do have, uh, you know, you do have an obvious neckline coming in right around here. I'm curious to see where that where that target would be postured around. That would be actually all the way down towards uh, 44 to 40, uh, about 43 to 44 bucks or so. Again, that's likely only going to play out if Bitcoin dumps out as well. Let's say below our current lows at about 34,000 bucks. You see probably a move down towards, um, you know, low 32 or so, maybe even 30 on a wick. And uh, and you'd probably see Luna do something similar down, which is actually in line with the daily 200 simple right here as well. Anyways, uh, you asked about a weekly here too. Let me see if the weekly is showing anything that we haven't already seen. Um not really no <laughs> not really no uh monthly um you know still just kind of a back film last month open which isn't too concerning bi-weekly it's a little more concerning we do see uh, some bearish divergence forming right there 
Um, and the next target on that would be $44 or so. Um, if things take another major, major leg down from there, then probably looking at about $20. But I think that that's very far away from right now. I'd still just be looking at this uh, on the short term right here. And again, um, where would actually flip around to being just generally bullish on this thing? Uh, that's actually quite simple in this case. Anywhere back above this last rejective high, which is just around 86, 87 bucks, would look really, 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 really good. Um, again, I, I don't think that's necessarily the most likely thing to happen right here, to be honest with you. But hey, it is it is in the cards, I suppose, or at least that would that would kind of negate um, or, or, or invalidate kind of what we're looking at right here. But again, easier to watch Bitcoin for direction and then apply those levels to something like Luna and Luna. Yeah, is showing relative strength to Bitcoin, but I just don't think that it's going to be immune from any sort of major downside move from Bitcoin uh, if that so happens. Um, so hopefully that was helpful, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. I think that we got through all of that. I see uh, Sid Sidarth is next. He says, do we see a rally in Q3 to Q4? Um, I do think that like, okay, define rally, right? Like there's going to be bounces and, and, and big moves to the upside, even within the context of a, you know, of a mostly downside market. I'm guessing that in terms of rally, you're talking about a macro reversal. I do think best case scenario is that, look, th this is best case, all hopium implied scenario would be Bitcoin, um, you know, bottoming out about 30,000 bucks. And then you see it turn back up sometime around the end of Q2 of this year. Uh, so that would be like, uh, I guess, into Q3, uh, essentially start of Q3 for you. Um, you know, I, I think that's best case scenario right now. Uh, so can that happen? Yes. Do uh, do I have a crystal ball as to whether it's going to happen or not? Absolutely fucking not, man. Um, there, there is zero way for me to know. This market is mostly being driven right now by the global macroeconomic situation. And I don't have like an ear into, <laughs> you know, what the Fed is deciding to do. I can just, you know, kind of uh, postulate around it and then know my levels for where I do start to change around. Here's what I can say, though, or, or at least speak towards those levels. For Bitcoin, that's above about $48,000, wherever that 618 Fibonacci retracement was on the bearish retracement, which was presumably the, um, the bull trap or the potential bull trappy area, which where the fuck is it? Where did it go? It's right here. There it is. Uh, yeah, that'd be 38,500 above there. Hey, I'm, I'm happy to call all, uh, you know, all bearishness off. I'd be macro bullish looking for, you know, moves back up towards 60,000 plus and the rest of the market very likely goes with it. Um, uh, where and, until that happens, I mean, I, I, I do think that, or it's not that I do think anything below that area is a lower high in the weekly. And the problem with getting a lower high in the weekly is that we already have a lower low. So that would be con your confirmed reversal, which we have not seen a weekly downtrend with both a lower low and a lower high since, I mean, since 2018, actually, um, or sorry, I guess technically like 2019 as well, but uh, you get my point, right? Um, or at least hopefully. Uh, anyways, uh, Mr. Ahmad says, bro, could you please check stacks, STX, short, medium, and long time from Don't know what the fuck that means to you, man, but I'm just going to try a four hour and daily in this case. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, not great right here. Um, I guess the hopium is that you still are operating on weekly higher lows. Um, I'm guessing uh, I don't really have much of a chart here, although if you're on the long term, I'm guessing this is long term to you. I don't know if it's long term to you, but the hopium is that you're going to do something like this and not take out your last weekly higher low. And then you got some like this, but this is hopium right now. Uh, where would what? Uh, sorry, what what is the daily look like right here? Um, I mean, you actually still are OK on the daily as well, uh, technically from a long term perspective. Where does one start to look good again? I think is the real question above 180, above 180 on a daily closure. I'd say, hey, this is a bullish correction and very likely going to see this one test around your prior highs and very likely break above your prior highs over a long enough time horizon, you know, maybe into like uh, Q3, Q4 of this year. And there'd be implied target on this one as well, which would be pointed up all the way towards I mean, nine, ten bucks, uh, sorry, eight and a half to nine bucks or so. Problem is, is that this all gets negated and completely thrown by the wayside the second that you do come back down and close below this last low right here, which was 113. And again, does Bitcoin, you know, you know, does Bitcoin drag the rest of the market down with it? Or it's not necessarily Bitcoin dragging the rest of the market down with it. Like the market is all going to go in the same direction. But Bitcoin is just an easier uh, one to kind of decide on direction. But basically, if I was just looking at this one, 113 is my major area on this one. 
below there uh, all hope is lost for a for for a very long time short-term time frames like a full hour are you getting ready for more of a bounce uh, than not uh, yeah I do think so but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't validate a bounce on this one similar to Bitcoin until you're closing at least an hourly above 148 probably uh, more wise to use the full hour on an altcoin like this uh, you know it's, it's just better to err on the side of caution but I guess if you're gonna use an hourly maybe in that case I'd just be like 149 versus a full hour above of about 148. If one of those two things happens, I'd be looking for a decent rally actually up to about 165 to 170 or so. That probably would come off the back of some, you know, uh, good good news, right? Uh, on Wednesday or so. Um, so if you see something like that, that'd be okay. But um, until then, you know, it's, it's it, I, I, th I just think it's easy to watch Bitcoin right now uh, as usual. Um, anyways, uh, let's see. Herculano Santos says, Portugal is the best country in the world. Really? I'm Portuguese. Really? Uh, in Brazilian, what? <laughs> South, South has California vibes. Yeah, the Algarve. Yeah, that's kind of where we're looking at, man. Um, North is the best part to live. Really? Okay. Uh, maybe I should pick your brain about this, but maybe this isn't the best time as well. <laughs> this isn't, oh, Elsa says no, it's colder, and she just wants warm, warm weather. Uh, on Bitcoin, believe we are going to the 200 weekly EMA support at 25,000 over the next uh, three months. Could be. Um, I mean, that is kind of a long-term base for Bitcoin, generally speaking. Uh, if we go over here to the weekly, you can see that it's been slowly crawling up towards about 20,000 bucks. You'll imagine that it, you know over the next uh, let's say three to four weeks it'll probably be around 22 maybe even twenty five thousand dollars each and every week that passes it goes up about um 200 to 300 dollars it looks like it went from last week to this week it was uh 19300 or sorry uh, 19250 ish or so from last week this week it is 19450 ish or so so it is crawling up there but uh the you know essentially the more time that bitcoin kind of spends going sideways here the more time it's going to have to catch up and i would actually be looking at the monthly 55 as you know an equally as good kind of basin region some of what we saw over here some of what we saw over here some of what we saw over here hey, you can get books below that's fine but um you know, that would be like my my worst case scenario, major base on a closing basis, um, essentially. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and thank you for the information, man, as well. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really, really interested in that place. It just uh, seems like it ticks a lot of boxes. Um, NWB says, could we be an expanded flat if God damn it with the fucking Elliott wave? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I don't follow Elliott Wave. I don't care about Elliott Wave. For the most part, I see Elliott Wave as a distraction um, from things that matter more. I know that that is going to really piss off some people, uh, even some people that I really, really respect as well. But whenever I look at their analysis, while sometimes their their Elliott Wave theory is uh, is correct, they're more often correct on the short-term move and the reaction from that short-term move than anticipating the next one, two, three, four, five, you know, waves from there, which I don't see work out all that often. Um, but I understand for, for most people, for, for the people who I see who use it successfully and, and I can verify are successful, like a Fibo Swanee or like a Crypto Ed, what they're typically doing is they're typically using it as like a guide. And as always, there needs to be an invalidation and a validation for that. I've never been a big fan of Elliott Wave myself, and I think it gets rather popular in bull markets especially just because well everything works in a bull market everything works in a bull market for the most part um but in down markets if you were around in 2018 for example uh most people using Elliott wave theory in like 2017 they were like gods and elevated to stardom in uh in the crypto space and then once 2018 hit they all left or it's not that they all left they all they all vanished into obscurity um you know i, I remember there I, I won't say this guy's name but he has the voice like a this <laughs> and um and, and and you know he's not a bad like this doesn't make someone a bad person it's just something that i've noticed with a lot of these elliot wave people is that uh their short-term targets are usually really fucking good actually because it's usually based off of fibs which is a big part of my game as well and that certainly has a lot of merit and a lot of edge to it but trying to then devise you know three four five moves after that it's just the probabilities of that happening gets less and less and less with each in, in uh, with each successive move like for myself man i uh i i just look at one move at a time that's it that's it and the shorter the better actually because that's typically going to have a higher probability as well but the problem with elliott wave is is that it looks really sexy and it looks really amazing and when it works out it's like it's fucking phenomenal man because sometimes it does work out absolutely um, and I, I just don't want the people who I'm, uh, who I really respect to use it, uh, who, uh, to think that like, I'm talking shit about them. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually giving them praise in a sense. It's, uh, it's the majority of Elliott waivers who have, in my opinion, no fucking idea what they're doing. Um, 
sorry, <laughs> who are not those guys. Uh, but yeah, man, expanded fat, a ABC correction. Don't even, I, I don't even know the terminology for it, to be honest with you. Uh, look, $30,000 is a relevant and reasonable target for many reasons, as we postulated before. I don't know if that has anything to do uh, or coincides with any Elliott wave, but you know, there, if, if you're asking if there, if there's any merit to that, yeah, absolutely. There is, um, you know, 30,000 bucks is a hard base, uh, you know, assuming that 35,000 does fail anyways. Uh, Mark Wixted says, please have a, and, and sorry to finish that thought as well with Elliott wave. The pro like the big problem is as well is that price action is, um, you know, if, if you come from, if, if you believe black skulls, which, you know, you probably should, cause it is, it is verified and valid in many ways. Price action is in some ways a random walk, right? Now, I could push back on that statement and say that price action isn't necessarily random, but it is unpredictable. But the problem is, is that you're trying to do too much. Like, just weird shit can happen, man. Ten Sigma events fucking happen. You need to have a validation or invalidation for when those ideas work and when they do not. And a lot of the time, that's what that's what I see missing from those plans. And so I see them uh, a lot of the time get, you know, people get very married to these ideas. I remember this one guy in the fucking Discord. Oh, my God, man. This guy in the Discord was like, he was talking so much shit to me over the summer. He's like, crowns of fucking moron he's a stupid idiot because i have an le wave and it hasn't been invalidated and it's pointing down towards twenty two thousand dollars or whatever the fuck it was and i'm like all right that's you know that's fair game I, I didn't respond to him and then it's like the bear trap happens right here and it's like that's something that you know we had a validation for we said hey look you know the second that bitcoin closed a daily above 32 this thing's gonna fucking fly uh to the upside um you know that's that's that that's 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 who i have in my mind when i talk about elliott wave in kind of a, a little bit more of a negative light <sighs> Chris Biolo brings up a really good point. Let's not forget that Bitcoin has never lived through a recession like 2000 and 2007. Yeah, I mean, I'll bring up this chart here again Yes, uh, from yesterday. Uh, I do think that this does deserve some merit. I don't mean to skip over some of the super chats, but look, this is NASDAQ right here. This is even log scale. This is what the real chart looks like. Again, I don't want to... <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh uh, well, that looks really good. Oh, monthly jewel pointed down. That's 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 really nice. You know, it's like you you have to you have to think like over the next few months if Nasdaq works its way down to. 30, uh, 13,450 or 13,400, what's Bitcoin going to look like during that time? And, and, and to be fair, you know, again, NASDAQ probably, probably likely to open this week up on a bounce. Um, it really wouldn't be asking for too much. I mean, even back up to like 14,800 to maybe even 15,000 bucks on like, or just above 15,000 um, on a quick move, especially coming into Wednesday, like assuming there's some, you know, quote unquote good mo uh, news in this case. Um, but again, it's like, this is a hard chart like this is a hard chart to love so in the last uh two years there has been one time where i where i really thought that there was going to be a major high on this asset that was actually right here in september um i was wrong about that uh i was wrong about that obviously we had a valid or sorry an invalidation for when that I idea would be invalidated but this would be the second time in the last couple of years where i'd really feel like that um i do i do take quite quite pride not to uh, stroke my own ego here um you know that's that's not the point of trading but uh but you know we we were one of the first people to really get bullish coming off of the flu dump over here non march no it was once it recovered that last high, uh, lower uh sorry uh, lower high yes uh, which was like right here in the in the subsequent month i'm kind of thinking the same thing over here as well man um you know it's uh, not great uh it's likely to bounce here short term bouncies are, are 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 rather likely but you know it's sold into the close on friday on volume usually not a great setup um uh so fair enough you know again I, I i do think i do think it's very likely to bounce around here probably spend some time but have to be wondering on the higher term time frames over the next few months if if nasdaq does make a move down to like 13 400 or 13 500 which there are several reasons to, you know, uh, prepare for a move like that, seeing as we have one, two, three, four drops of bearish divergence on the fucking monthly with the monthly jewel turning down in a corrective or sorry, in a contractive phase on monthly uh, BBWP. You know, I, I do think that's a very reasonable target. Um, you know, if things get really crazy, maybe like 12, 250 and like a crash situation, like a real crash situation. But uh, it's just like the more and more that, that I look at this chart, it's, you know, have to be 
defensive of a move like that, um, at least in my opinion. So, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Anyways, um, Mark Wick said, says, please have a look at OMI daily and weekly. OMI, is this the, is this the Ecomi thingy? It is the Ecomi thingy. Uh, not bad. Not bad at all, actually. In fact, one of the better charts that we've seen today. That is really, really interesting, man. Um, cool. I don't, uh, okay, say so daily and weekly, you say. Um, this is actually quite good, man. Uh, I, wow. So, so what did it, okay, that's, okay, let, let's just chart it for the weekly right here. Uh, what did this one do last week alongside a Bitcoin, basically like 20 or 30% downside move? This one also uh, went down about 32%, but it did recover a good amount by end of closure. Uh, only, only down 17%. That's like a fucking catastrophic crash in traditional markets and crypto. It's like, hey, it did quite well. It did quite well, all things considered. Uh, anyways, um, I actually don't think that this one's that bad. I would not be bearish on this thing uh, as long as you're above about five tenths of a cent. Uh, yeah, on a daily right here, five tenths of a cent is kind of my line in the sand. Until then, kind of looking for a bit of sideways within this range. And you know, if it's just another another lower high, just above five tenths of a cent, something like that pops back up. That's going to look really, really good. Something like that would be okay. Um, obviously, your validation of a long-term continuation move would be a daily closure above the top side of your range, which is about eight spot two tenths of a cent, with targets up so somewhere right around. Guessing this is, uh, yeah, April highs, April, May highs or so, somewhere right around there. Um, but yeah, really, really interesting right here. Here's the thing though, and I should offer up this on the other side. If you do start to uh, close daily dildos below about five tenths of a cent, at that point, I would be looking, you know, at minimum four and a half tenths of a cent, probably another bounce there, but ultimately somewhere down around here uh, in the threes or so. But uh, for right now, this is one of the ones that's acting relatively well. Um, it's showing relative strength. I know that you did not ask about a four hour. I do think that the four hour is setting up for maybe another short term downside move around your uh, closing lows right here. But that's not that's not that's not a breakdown just yet. So uh, very, very interesting, man. I was not expecting to see that. Uh, Mark Wilson says FTM, USD, one, four and daily. Sorry. What? Uh, oh, it's let's go, Brandon. Can we see ADA on the weekly and daily time frames? Sure. OK, ADA. Uh, USD. All right. Hey, uh, Anton, Lago is actually where we're looking at uh, right now, man. That's very interesting that you uh, mentioned that. No, that's Sawgrass, sir. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ, Elsa. My lord. Anyways, uh, Cardon Cardurpio. I haven't recorded any videos today either. Uh, this one's already breaking below my low side structure here. That's in the midst of a breakdown, actually. All right. Here we have Cardurpio, uh, symbol ADA versus the dollar. And uh, I believe we have a breakdown um, somewhat in progress right here, actually. Uh, with that in mind, there's going to be bounce along the way, especially if um, if good if good news comes out on Wednesday. You might see a quick move to the upside, somewhere around about a buck and a quarter, maybe even as high as about a buck 30. But ultimately, I do think that would just be your next lower high before a continuation of trend to the downside. We did see our move. Here's the problem with this one is that we kind of already saw our move down, our targeted region down to a dollar based off of the break of this area right here at about a buck twenty. Um, so, uh, you know, in, or in order to kind of talk about the next move, we have to be looking like significantly lower in this case, I guess, uh, which is just I always get a little bit on edge when talking about, you know, I guess in this case, like a 20 percent move again uh, after already playing out last week a from top to bottom, a 42 percent move. Holy shit. Uh, either which way, here's here, you know here's how I can boil it down. I'd actually move up your point of failure uh, f to about 132 in this case, as long as you're above there, or sorry, as long as you're below there. Uh, corrections, you know, sometime this week, uh, anywhere within that range is fine. It would just likely be in, a, or it would be just another lower high before preparation of lower prices monthly is looking atrocious about to break the 21 actually with only uh, seven days left to go if that does happen and you do see a closure below about a buck or so i would be looking for this one to correct uh heavily into uh february somewhere around 70 to 75 cents until then short-term time frames what are we looking like uh if you are looking for a short-term move to the upside we can actually just get rid of this one this one's a little more pertinent for this time frame uh, that'd be 117 spot two um uh you know above there on an hourly or especially a four-hour closure i would look for uh card card 
Card Cardano to go back up towards about a buck and a quarter, maybe even as high as a buck 30, a buck 32. But again, assuming daily closures below a buck 32, I'm just looking at that as a short term correction before more trend continuation. In this case, trend continuation is to the downside. I want to see in order to uh, call a major low or at least be a lot more confident of a major low uh, daily BBWP in the 95 percentile or more right now. For reference, it is 88 and a half percentile. And the last times that we've actually seen this one um, bottom out were actually pretty comparable a little bit higher in the shallow 90s but still a little bit higher i'm talking about the august lows and the may lows uh, of the prior year of course right here and right here um, which were significant uh, prior to that you know we have seen it bottom out at 100 percentile so higher is better and my you know my my general point here is that this one you know very likely does see expansion with uh, trend continuation daily rsi is technically going to have a chance to build up bullish divergence but can still come down significantly even down to you know the 30s or so and still maintain uh, another drive of bullish divergence right there i'm curious to see what it's looking like from a stochastic perspective um I'm curious to see if what it's looking like on especially the higher term time frames, like a monthly. Monthly is downside angle. Bless you, sir, as long as it's below 250. So again, corrective at best, uh, in my opinion, for a while. Weekly is going to shift back down with another closure below 119. To be fair, this is in really, 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 really critical territory. It's kind of hard to keep momentum on the downside when you see a read like this. But could that could that align with one more washout, go fuck yourself move? Potentially, yes. Daily is nose diving below 130. So 130, a really good area for changing the buys here, at least in my opinion. Buy daily is freshly down and rejecting getting out of the bearish controls. And that's fucking great. 118, five day is also down very, 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 very low right there. But, you know, does deserve a bit of recognition. And I'm curious to see what the lower term timeframes look like, like a four hour in this case. Yeah, four hours about to freshly cross down with any sort of closure below 107. And that's coming in about 49 minutes and 26 seconds. You know, forgive me if uh, if if I say it's a little more likely for this one to try another move to the downside uh, from here. Um, but I'd still be using, uh, what exactly was it? What would I even look at as my ballot? I mean, you already played out the move right there based off of our break from last week's targets. So it's like, do you look for the same move again? I, I guess retrace that wick. That'd be fucking nasty. Um, either which way, uh, not my favorite chart of the day. <laughs> Hopefully that was helpful. And there you go for Cardano, sir. Sweet man. Uh, or maybe not so sweet. Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, Paul Garrett, uh, Matic on the forearm daily. Uh, sure, man. It, it's all good, man. It's all good. Again, it's a selfish but altruistic endeavor. So uh, there's no need to say thank you. It's, um, you know, it's 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 like a round robin. We're all we're all happy, right? Anyways, uh, you're looking at a four hour and a daily. Okay, I'm very curious. To see what, wow, this one really let go. Yeah, so this one didn't just uh, didn't just take out the nine the one ninety two and a half dollar level. It smashed through it. It smashed through it with absolute fucking force. Smashed through it with the force of a thousand discord member server uh <laughs> server members posting pictures of uh of of, of racy young ladies saying <laughs> yeah man i would tap that <laughs> elsa loves those conversations she, she always comments on them she's like what are these guys thinking <laughs> like it's like yeah bro i'd i'd hit that she's like but what about the other person <laughs> I always thought that was, it's like, yeah, maybe the other person does deserve a little bit of consideration. It's like, yeah, bro, I would hit that. Hey, what's up, Jason? There he is. Speaking of Carderpio, what's up, brother? <laughs> Good morning to you. Hopefully everything is all good over on your side. And and as always, guys, check out Jason Pizzino. He is a level-headed Australian, beautiful accent, very handsome young fellow as well. And his birthday's coming up too, so wish him a happy birthday. Uh, we'll be having a Sims episode on the day after as well, and tomorrow too. Uh, anyways, let me, uh, yeah, the Carderpio life. There you go. Ahem. <clears throat> Alrighty, there we go. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, Matic. That's right. Uh, the topic at hand right here. Okay. Let's uh, let's follow up on this one. Here we have Polygon symbol Matic uh, symbol M A T I C versus the dollar, and we did break our major level last week. One ninety two and a half was the major one, which did allow for, or sorry, uh, imply a move down somewhere around about a buck fifty to a buck sixty. We certainly got that. It did close the week at, a, uh, at a, just above a buck sixty, but right now I do think that this one does likely have one more sweep of the downside lows, maybe a little bit lower, somewhere around about a buck thirty two to a buck thirty five or so, and very likely another bounce implied right there. Um, I'm curious what momentum also does look like right here. We do see weekly BBWP going for a bit of expansion, but not anything too damning just yet. Other than that, I wouldn't make too much off of weekly uh, oscillators. 
mean, technically speaking, you will have a chance for hidden bullish divergence if you do reverse, uh, which won't be confirmed with until you do have a weekly closure back above your breakdown level, which is the same level as before, 190 or so. Daily, we do see is is hanging on for dear life on the daily 200 simple. Problem with this one is, is again, I don't see any bullish divergence here just yet possible. And we do see the daily jewel is, it's really, 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 really aggressive down here, but we have seen extreme conditions before, it has gone lower. So I'm not really seeing just yet what I want to see on like a on like a major macro low. Daily BBWP is still crawling its way up there. It's getting it's getting very very close to areas where I do look for on major lows. Uh, it is currently at about 92 spot 86 percentile. I want to see that get above about 95 percentile. That's where this one typically does find some pretty major in some cases macro lows. Uh, I just want to find a quick example of this. Let me put this back on log scale. It's going to make it easier to see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you do have an, an iteration right here on this major low, or it's not even a macro low, but it is a major low. This one over here on the macro low from March 2020, actually. That's actually a really good iteration right there. Other than that, this one does seem to make a lot of its lows on lower volatility, which makes sense because it's mostly been an upside market. <laughs> so right now we're seeing it now probably make some major lows on, uh, on you know, on higher volatility. Anyway, short term time frames like a full hour, it's just keeling on over. We do see another drop of hidden bearish divergence right there. Similar to Bitcoin, I do think that this one is very likely to sweep its current lows just a little bit lower just a little bit lower perhaps as well down around about 135 to 132 or so and try for another bounce there at that point i want to see where daily bbwp is and uh and potentially call a nice bouncy bounce but again any bounce that fails to get back above about 192 it's just another lower high and uh, in similar to Bitcoin below about 44,000 or even especially below 40,000 in this case um, i'm curious to see all right let's take the whole formation going on right here so we'll do it like this and uh holy shit we're just getting below the 618 right now that is that is uh that is concerning the not 0.5 is at 140 and the 382 is at about 120 dear lord i'm um, curious to see also what it looks like from a stochastic uh, momentum perspective and then we can talk about short-term upside targets if it does take out the short-term time frame uh, upside range uh, but for right now four hour stochastic momentum is about to turn down freshly again within the bearish control zone with any sort of a closure and uh, below about 153 in the next 44 minutes and five seconds Daily is uh, nose diving still below 170, so at least uh, at least corrected at best for right now. Weekly is freshly nose diving below 283, also not great. Five day below 265. Monthly is going to cross down below 130. Uh, so this is these are not great setups right here. But let's talk about uh, about a little bit of hopium for the short term. If you do see a, an hourly or especially a four hour closure above about 166 in this case, I would be looking for a short term rally somewhere back around the mid 180s. That, as you probably have picked up, is not going to be good enough or does not imply a break back above 192 specifically. Above 192, I would say correction is over. And, you know, that would probably be off the back of like some really, 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 really uh, encouraging news that you might see on Wednesday if like all of the hopium stars align. Until then, I do think a little bit lower is more likely first. Even the full hour jewel is about to uh, freshly turn down again at Fib resistance, uh, although we don't have a signal just yet, but it's very, very close, similar to the last one that we got on January 21st, which was uh, during this dump right here, which got a nice move down to, oh my God. Uh, oh, a nice, just clean 22% move down. Beautiful, just fucking beautiful. Hopefully that was helpful for Matic, and there you go, sir. Cool, um, or maybe not cool for you, but uh, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, NWB is back, says, when you mention a lower high, would it be the first lower high on a weekly under approximately 48,000? That would indicate much lower, unless it bottom out at 40,000. Okay, I'm not sure that I'm fully interpreting your question properly. Um, based off of, I'm guessing you're English, so you probably speak better English than me, but basically you're saying, would you mention, would you mention a lower high? W oh, when you mention a lower high, would it be the first lower high in a weekly under approximately 48,000? I mean, he here's, here's the problem, man. This is actually not a lower high right here, which would actually be about 52,000. Anything below, anything really below about 60,000 bucks is a lower high. Uh, cause your last weekly high is, is well, is pretty much the all time high right there. 
Um, the thing that I'm going off of is, is a little bit more on the Hopium side, actually, now that you mention it. And that is simply because we do have the 618 Fibonacci bearish retracement right here on the whole formation from 30,000 base to $69,000 high. And I usually look, or it's not that I usually, I, I traditionally look uh, between the 618 and the 0.5 on your bull trap. So that's where I expect a lower high to come in. Technically speaking, you'd have a lower high all the way up to 60,000 bucks, but uh, that's the relevancy of that region, which I believe is what you're asking. Um, anyways, that would indicate much lower unless, yeah, and, and, and yes, that would indicate much lower. Um, basically, uh, I mean, that would be your next weekly lower high. You have a lower low already. You have a weekly reversal. And your full-on confirmation of likely a meltdown uh, coming would be with a move back down below 40000 bucks. The hopium is that you just swing back around here for a higher low and then take out that lower high and continue onwards and upwards. And that's actually exactly what happened back here. That's exactly what happened back here. Um, so in this case, you can see the 618 was a little bit... Uh, uh, higher than that, yeah, uh, was pretty much at this high coming after the first lower low right here. So you had lower low, boom, you pop into a what was a lower high, comes down and then flips back around right between the three eight or sorry at the bottom of the three eight two on a wick basis and then floats up. Once it took out this high, it's you know it's just uh, off to the fucking races, right? So. Uh, let me just erase all that. But yeah, uh, I think that's what you're asking. And hopefully I addressed what you were looking for. Um, if not, let me know, sir. Uh, cool. All right. So let me scroll back here. I think we got Mr. Mark Wilson. He says FTM USD one four and daily looking for looking to play low time. I'm guessing that means low time frame. Um, all right. Uh, then why are you looking at a daily? <laughs> If you're going to look at low time frames, look at low time frames, right? Okay, so uh, so Phantom is starting to really lose its uh, its its more immediate formation right here. I do think that this one will eventually come down to about a buck sixty to a buck sixty five. I'm actually going to record this one as well. All right, here we have Phantom symbol FTM versus the dollar. This has been a very interesting one to follow because it has been one of the more strong ones in the past uh, two to three weeks on this rally up here. Um, and I actually do think that this one will, will long-term be strong here as well, but I don't think that it's immune from general market corrections. And if Bitcoin does turn down again, that meaning below about $35,000 on a higher time frame closure, very likely to see Phantom uh, give a full-on test somewhere down around the 200 simple, which would be between about 160 to 170, depending upon the time that you approach it from. Um, and to be fair, that'd actually still be just a longer term, higher low, uh, right here, as you can see. And this would actually just be within the context of one long-term ascending triangle, right? With a long-term, uh, likely upside breakout, you know, maybe around, uh, March, April or so, which would actually have an implied target as well. Now we're getting way off into the hopium weeds here because this is not even relevant until you close a weekly successfully above, what is this like 3.30 or so? And then, yeah, um, I'd be looking at targets towards seven to eight dollars or so i guess uh, that's kind of aggressive but anyways um it's actually holding up really really well right here all things considered i, I just don't think that it's immune from market moves so if bitcoin plays another downside move i'm looking somewhere right around here if you're on the very low term time frames as you did ask for uh like a full hour i'm looking at this as the next lower high actually you do see some hidden bearish evidence uh, or hold on i yeah, you do see a little bit of hidden bearish divergence um, uh, forming right here. It's not like a death sense, but very likely does we get at least another test down to about 190 short term hourly. Same thing. And you're seeing the full hour play out this move on declining volatility and the daily is still ticking up here. So the daily trend uh, has taken out the last uh, higher low in this case. So you do have a bit of a reversal going on right there. I'm not looking for the next major low basically until we see daily BBWP at least 90 percentile. The higher, the better in this case. Um, I'm trying to think of the last time we found a major low in this one that was uh, coming off of the May dump right here. And it got up all the way to 90 percentile, actually. So uh, I do think that this one maybe has one more uh, one more one more move lower, tries for like a major low right here. And then and then if uh, Bula Jesus does allow for, I would be looking for it to turn uh, sideways and up. Just curious to see what it looks like from here on a higher time frame perspective, uh, just to kind of judge the more long term. Weekly is up as long as above two o or as long as we're above two o seven, which right now you're below by, by about half cent. <laughs> uh, five days going to freshly turn down below two fourteen, and that one's closing tomorrow, so that's not great. Uh, daily still corrective for a while below two sixty eight. Full hour is going to freshly turn down below two o eight, closing in. 37 minutes and nine seconds. So tick tock, tick tock, motherfucker. And uh, sorry, hey, don't laugh. It's his money. Um, 
and uh, an hourly down as well. So, uh, I, you know, I do think that this one uh, is more likely to go downside here um, and try for a major low right there. Uh, worst case scenario, if Bitcoin, like, let's just say the world fucking goes tits up. Well, I guess you're probably looking at like December lows again. But um, again, one of the better charts actually long term. I just think it's going through a, a higher term time frame correction right here. Um, so all things considered, hopefully that was helpful. And there you go on Phantom, sir. Uh, cool. Maybe not cool. Uh, anyways, Crypto King says, please look at the one inch crypto. The one inch crypto? What is this? The one inch crypto? The one inch crypto, huh? Uh, is this the worst chart of the day? Duper says, if you don't mind a Forex pair. I love Forex, actually. Pound Yen, this is my favorite shitcoin pair to trade. Uh, G I almost spelled it wrong, though. Um, I haven't really traded Forex in a while now, but uh, this is my favorite one. Yeah, down. <laughs> uh, short to medium time frame. Okay, so uh, if you're on a daily, I would I'd be saying another move down. Um, but I'm guessing that means to you like a full hour and an hourly perhaps. Uh, full hour is breaking down. Man, I, if I can say one thing about this, this thing really does trade like a shit coin. It like pumps and dumps out of nowhere. Um, but I am looking for this one to, to trade lower here. Uh, hidden bearish evidence on hourly. We see hourly jewel turning down at the same time, volatility turning up. That is a continuation signal. Um, uh, maybe even as far down on the full hour, like uh, 153 and uh, 67 or so, somewhere around there. Um, long term, well, you don't. Really, I, I don't think you really care about long term, so maybe I just don't. Uh, yeah, may, maybe I don't look at that. But yeah, short term, I'm looking a little bit more sideways and down. I would not call a uh, a big a big boy bounce. Let's call it, um, unless if you flip back around and, clo and close an hourly above about 154 and a half. And at that point, I'd just be looking for a short term move somewhere back around here, uh, somewhere back around about 154.8 to 154.9 or so. Um, but yeah, for right now, I'm looking for continuation lower. Uh, Todd Hall, or sorry, I just skipped three diglets. What's up, brother? Uh, AVAX, gotcha. Um, we can look at it, but uh, time frames would also be massively helpful uh, to make it relevant towards you. Um, anyways, let me see how many videos I recorded for today. Maybe this one could be uh, relevant. And let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four. That's fine. That's that's plenty. Uh, AVAX completely losing its luster right here. I'm probably looking for this one to give at least one more try over the next week or two down to about 51 and a half or 52 bucks before uh, saying anything else. Uh, daily, atrocious. Um, you know, corrections midweek here can come up all the way to 74 bucks and that should just be like a kind of a sell area for me. There is nothing um, immediately bullish about this chart as long as you're below the last lower high, which is all the way in the 90s, the low 90s, so not relevant to talk about right now. Short-term timeframes are a continuation of the downside with hidden bearish divergence right here, and four-hour jewel is about to turn down as well, and volatility is ticking down here. That's 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 really nice. That's really nice. Um, I would call a bit of a short-term upside move, probably alongside Bitcoin, if you do see an hourly deal to closure above 20, uh, sorry, not 27, but 67, 27 in this case, with moves back up towards 73 to 74. Um, yeah, I think I think that's all we need to really do for this one. Uh, not, yeah, not the best chart of the day. This one really given up a lot more than what you would have expected for something that should be operating relatively strong monthly. Uh, this is what your real chart looks like. That's um, that's that. <laughs> that's that, man. I don't have anything else to add on to that. Uh, Peter says C R T S. Uh, okay, C R T. Okay, um, this Kratos. Okay, hey, not bad. What the fuck? What? This is really good. It's really really good, man. Um, this is a reaccumulation at a high level. Who knows what the hell this thing is, but. Uh, Look, I'm actually looking for this one to probably test back around your seven uh, seven tenths of a cent highs uh, in the next week, uh, maybe even a few days. Uh, full hour, short term probably does come back down somewhere around about um, anywhere around here. It's probably fair game, but I'm just looking for higher lows. Okay, I will peen it. I will peen it. Uh, <laughs> that's what else it sounds like. 
put it away. <laughs> so she says, I do not care. Goodbye. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, anyways, uh, I'm actually looking at this one as, as this is probably one of the best starts we've seen of today. Um, corrections down to like, what is this area right here? Five, five spot seven to five to basically six tenths of a cent is completely fine. Uh, I'm not necessarily calling a correction down there, but maybe if Bitcoin does turn down, you may, you might see a move like that. Until then, I'm looking over the next few days for this one to retest around your highs and any sort of a daily closure above your highs, which is like what, seven, seven and a quarter tenths of a cent looking for massively new all time highs, I, I guess kind of weird to see on on something like this uh, i guess i've never seen this thing before but maybe it has like some some drivers be i'm guessing it probably has some drivers behind it or it's just pumping them but uh upon breakage of your top side structure probably looking somewhere around here uh not bad um i only get bearish on this thing below about five tenths of a cent uh very interesting short term though i do think it probably is a, a short term move to the downside i don't know if that's relevant to you or not though um cool all right, M, M, M. Let's see, we got that, we got that. Let's move on to here. And I think we have Mr. Uh, Mr. Todd Hall next says Chromia, symbol CHR. CHR, okay. Chromia, USD. Whoa! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's uh, the no hope is going to save this one right now. Um, you know, you're more likely to bounce off your 200 simple or not. Probably yes, but, uh, well, I guess when you put it on law scale, it's not that bad. <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, what time daily and weekly? So you're very high term time frame. To be to be fair, you are you are already testing. Oh, these are your December lows, not your summer lows. Oh wow, okay. Let's go to a weekly then. Um, I do think that this one actually does have a chance to maybe put in a bottom somewhere around about forty five cents. Uh, so probably another swing around there, maybe another wick down, something like this. Uh, let me get out my my LARP lines, something like this. And then if you see it pop back up and then take out the, uh, what is this, 94 cent region right here, that's all cleared as far as I'm concerned and very likely creates new all-time highs well above a buck 50. Um, until then, a little bit of hoping right there, but uh, not certainly not as bad as what I would, as what I was expecting. Um, this one is holding up relatively better than most things. Uh, where did I call this one really a failure and, and ready to uh, make moves down towards like a quarter? <laughs> quarter to, to 30 cents or so that would be with a weekly closure below the 29th of november weekly low right here which is 46.20 uh and you're specifically asking about daily and weekly so that's probably most relevant to you you could even use a daily closure below that region as well and yeah i would be looking for that continuation until then probably looking at one more swipe of the, you know of of around that region and then very likely uh, try a rally from there um uh, i really only get like super bearish on this one if you break that region um which to be fair, there's you know there are several things that do say there is risk lower right now, but I'd actually want to see a closure below that region first. Um, OZO says XLM on the month. Oh man, <laughs> stellar, huh? Stellar. I remember this one from 2017. Uh, let's see where it's at. Think, don't think you're gonna like me after that one um look can it bounce here yeah i mean it can it can bounce here but if, if you're specifically asked about the monthly like it's not great um I, I would not look at this one as reversing or doing anything uh good like which i'm guessing is probably what you're more interested in as long as you're below what is this 31 cents so corrections can can easily come back up on an upside move to like 22 to 23 cents it means nothing that i'd just be looking at that as honestly like a sell um the weekly to be closed below this wick low right here, uh, 19 and a half versus 20 cents. No, didn't, didn't close below. So that's okay. But again, going over to here to the month, of May, I, I look, I, I, I don't think that this, I don't think that this is the bottom of this. I do think that this is just a retest of your 2018 highs and back down. And, uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm where where's where's my long-term chart of this one i know i have one here it's under a symbol str on poloniex uh let's just double check um yeah okay you are actually coming off the 55 here Sh theoretically you should get another big bounce um and i shouldn't be too bearish on this one just yet but below there yeah uh, very likely retracing back down to your 2020 lows or so um actually i mean honestly 
I would actually be looking for bounce within this region first. Hey, does it, you know, does it reclaim 32 cents or so? Okay, uh, correction over and, you know, probably beautiful again. But uh, for right now, probably looking for this one to hit 100 percentile minimum before I, before I start to call those. Again, it's like if Bitcoin turns down here and tests, you know, 32, uh, uh, maybe in like the next week or two, do I expect this one to not follow? I expect this one to follow, essentially. Uh, Greg Daniel says super perfundo on the yearly on the early eve of your day. I don't know what that means, man. But good good morning to you as well. Uh, polka dot daily and weekly, sure. Uh, symbol D O T. Let's see where this one's landed. I imagine probably not not great. <laughs> yeah, not great would be a a nice way of putting it. Uh, daily and weekly. Okay, so where are we at? We're all we're almost back down to summer lows right here. That's like your obvious base in this case, in the sense that. Uh, at minimum, I'm looking for big weekly bounce off this region, somewhere down around here. You're very, very close to it as well. Uh, daily, are we hitting extremes just yet? We're very, yeah, we are starting to hit extremes here. This is 93 and a half percentile. Um, the last time, or where's our last lows? Yeah, the last, the last major macro lows in this one was actually from May. You did hit 100 percentile for multiple days in a row, actually uh, three it looks like. Um, so I'm probably looking for a little bit more extreme conditions, but I do think this one's getting close here, as are most things. Just uh, I wouldn't call it just yet. And you will have an ever so slight drop of uh, bullish evidence if it can confirm something resembling a local low right there. Here's the problem, though. Uh, on any sort of a corrective move for the upside, it is just another lower high, especially as long as you're below 28 and a half. I mean, shit, man, even just even just uh, getting back above the prior breakdown region at 22 and three quarters uh, would be a win in this one. But um, for right now, I, I do think that risk still remains maybe a little bit low after one more swipe of the lows. You got another drive of hidden bearish divergence for me right here. Uh, four hour jewel is almost about to turn down, but not quite there. I think that this one very likely puts in another wick somewhere down around here and then tries for a bit of a rally, um, kind of similar to Bitcoin uh, in that case. M. Let's see. Let's see. Where did we leave off? Okay, we got that. We got that. Hurricane Bully says, can you check link, please? And thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, oh, man. I, I dread looking at this one today. <laughs> I looked at this one over the weekend. So let's, uh, well, let's give this chart its due diligence, I suppose, at this point. Dear Lord, man, this thing, this thing literally just fell off. Hold on. Where's my, yeah, there it is. 44% down on the week. Holy fucking shit. to confirm another lower high right here as well. And you're already closing on new lows. That's uh, that's that's really good. Uh, kind of similar to a lot of the other charts, I, I do think that you're gonna dig towards your summer lows, essentially. The hopium is that you at least try a rally from there and maybe even a major bottom, but you know, this one is starting to already hit extremes here. Daily BBWP is at above 95 percentile. Daily Jewel is, I don't even think it's ever seen lows like this, or sorry, yes, it has. Uh, and that was over the summer actually. Um, and before that was over September 2020, actually. Hold on, holy shit, where were these? Okay, so that was this region right here and this region right here. Wow, so those were like uh, macro lows, um, to be fair. So I do think that you're getting very, very close here. Uh, let's see what the weekly looks like. Yeah, probably one more, uh, probably one more test down to the wick lows that you saw last week and kind of over the summer right here. At that point, I'm probably going to start to look for a bounce on this one. Let's see what the monthly looks. Okay, that's that's a problem, man. That's a problem. Probably looking for a bounce off those regions, man. But uh, the monthly's kind of wrecked. <laughs> the monthly's pretty wrecked. Um, here, see what it looks like over here. Let's see if uh, if momentum oscillators are letting up or getting to extremes or, or not yet. Uh, let's see, 15 and a half, okay. Weekly is fresh down in the bearish control zone below $21, that's that's really nice. Five day fresh down as well in the bearish control zone below $18. Monthly is nose diving below 28 and a half. Um, just about to get in the bearish control zone for the first time since like two years ago. So that's, that's, that's not great. Daily's gonna turn up above 15 and a half, so. Uh, so short term, probably uh, a lot more closer to a bounce in the short term. Maybe after one more sweep of the downside, four hour will turn down below, uh, below about 1537 or so. It's a pretty aggressive move already, man. And that's kind of my thoughts on the general market. It's like short term time frames, maybe retest of the lows or something like that, and then try for a rally from there. We might have even already seen it. You know, if Bitcoin comes down again to like 34 or so, that would be, you know, that would be a little more obvious in my opinion. Um, and then probably bounce somewhere around like, you know, maybe maybe later today or into Wednesday. And then the question is, does the bounce reclaim any of the important areas for Bitcoin specifically? If it doesn't, well, correct, correct at best for a while. Um, cool. All right. Let me, uh, how many fish shows have you seen? I don't, I don't know, actually. I don't, I don't know what that means. Um, 
maybe this is new internet lingo, but uh, I'm actually not familiar with that term. Oh man, desperately need that water. <laughs> okay, let's see, let's see. Uh, AK Makar says, Adam, please, sir. Uh, if if done, then link. Nope, we have done link, but we have not done Adam. I think daily and weekly for Cosmos here. Um, let's see. Yeah, not. I really had a really, really good bounce yesterday, but this is uh, looking like a rejection to me on the short-term time frames. Drop of hidden bearish divergence right here. I think that this one's very, very likely to retest somewhere around the lows of like 28 to 29. Um, it's kind of similar to, uh, to Phantom, I think it was, in the sense that it is relatively strong on the longer term time uh, time scale here, but wouldn't be surprised to see this one maybe retest down around about $25 if Bitcoin completely dumps out towards towards 30 or so. You said daily and weekly, right? Is that right? You said, yeah, daily and weekly. Yeah, so you are focused on the higher term time frames. Uh, where would I say that correction is over and it's ready to retest around highs? That would be with a daily closure above your breakdown point at about $36 or so. Um, until then, I do think this one's a lot more likely to at least retest the lows right here. Per speaking, I do think that it will reach a little bit lower, but similar to Phantom, I do think that actually will be a long-term opportunity. Um, actually, I have this area marked off right here. Let's see, what is that relevant towards? Oh, that was relevant towards this higher low right here, but not on this one because it's, it's, already, it's already broken below. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, four hour turning down as well. Five day, yeah, same same thing. Probably looking for another move down around here, but long term, again, one of the better charts. Definitely one of the better charts we've seen. Uh, that would just be actually another higher low. I really only get concerned about this thing long term below about 23 and a half or so. That's where things start to look uh, very dire. <laughs> so let's say maybe maybe monthly is worth looking at here too. Yeah, same thing on the monthly actually. Same thing on the monthly. Uh, okay, Meeker's Adventure says, uh, USA evacuated in Ukraine, maybe war. Flux, please. Hopefully not war, man. I mean, like with, you know, jokes aside and everything, uh, that is not what this world needs right now. <laughs> that is not what this fucking world needs right now. Uh, Flux, maybe there's a tr uh, an exchange that has more history. Yeah, here we go. Kacoin has it. Um, yeah, not great as well, man. Um, not great as well, but, you know, well, let's hold on. What time frames? No time frames. Uh, four hours, same as all the other charts. I'm sure that we had some hidden bearish evidence right there. We do. Very likely it does retest somewhere around your lows. Hoping is that you bounce back up and then close above your four hour range highs, which is 170 and be get a continuation move back up to two dollars. But here's here's the real problem is the hey, what was was it the twelve hour? No, two day. What? Yeah, the two day. Uh not a big fan of this chart right here. I do think that this one very likely does retest at minimum around its lows. Um, I'd be looking for bigger bounces, maybe between around its current lows from uh, last week to uh, all the way down to about 115. Try for a bounce there, but um, I guess the hopium is that you do dig in. You don't see any closures below there, and you do something like this, and it's, it ends up being a macro higher low. But that's not going to be uh, any talk, any topic of reasonable conversation as long as you're below about 172 in this case. Above there, yeah, things do change around. And this one starts to look, you know, again, pretty damn good for the long term. But uh, even the lower term timeframes actually are going to get this one a little bit better, uh, quite honestly, than the higher term timeframes. Just want to see a four hour closure above 170. Um, and I'd actually say that this is going to be a nice, you know, not a nice interim low with targets up back up somewhere around about $2 or so. And the hopium uh, remains alive if that happens until then, more likely to continue. Uh, again, I want to see extremes here on daily um, BBWP. That's what I really like to look for on these uh, extreme moves. Uh, Jason Wittaveen says, VRA, please, in all capitals. Sorry, calm down. I'm right here. I'm right here. Um, I'm right here, man. Right here. Don't need to yell in my ear. Oh, sorry. I actually skipped mi over Mr. Alonzo Vega. Apologies about that. We'll get to that in a second. Um, no, I, I can do it. It's, it's just, it'll be really, really quick. And I actually want to see this one as well. Uh, CRV. Yeah, this one, this one's completely lost its luster as well. So not immune from the market's movements. Probably going to retest around your 250 wick lows and maybe try for a short-term bounce right there. If you're on a weekly, mm, I mean, this one's already kind of in dire straits here on a weekly and monthly, especially as well. I mean, the monthly's the uh, the monthly is, is really turning into a major rejection right here. So uh, I think that you know we could have made excuses for this one above about I think it was 420 to 450. Um, you know that level was obviously uh, destroyed last week. I don't, I don't have any more hopium for this one uh, on the long term, just short term bounces. And short term bounces can bring this one up to like three and a half, three, uh, 380, and just be another correction. Okay. Uh, VRA. Okay. VRA, huh? VRA, USD. Veracity. Um, no time frames given, just a fucking all capital message, you bastard. Sorry, man. 
<laughs> Sorry, man. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm not actually mad. I'm just having a little bit of fun. Uh, hit and bearish ever in his formula right here. Very likely to retest your wick lows from 22nd of January. Uh, hoping is that you bounce there and reclaim minimum back above like 22 and three quarters, and we get another bounce back up towards 28 to, or sorry, not 28 cents, but two spot eight cents to two spot nine cents. I think that's not very likely here, um, but that would be my conditions for that. Until then, weekly shows continuation, daily shows continuation. Very likely to retest your wick lows. Personally speaking, I do think this one will see about a, a cent and a half before it's all said and done. Um, and even then, I'd want to like see it after that. But monthly, not really much to make out of it, but does have bearish divergence for what it's worth. Bi weekly, you know, or sorry, weekly wrecked, bi weekly wrecked. It's going to be bounced along the way. But um, I just, I, I cannot be bullish on a chart like this as long as, or I guess I already have this area marked off, but same area as before, three spot six cent below there. Just another lower high, bro. Just another lower high. Um, so. Probably gonna see a bounce relatively soon though. Um, anyways, uh, Vince uh, says Rose USD. Sure, one full hour and daily. Okay, Rose, whoops, uh, Rose USD. Okay, and you're looking at a one four and daily. Uh, daily, like most charts, actually just freshly using losing the 55 right there. Not a great sign. Full hour time frame. Oh, what do you know? Another drop of hidden bearish divergence. Very likely to be getting another uh, test of like just above 28 cents, I think it is. Um, personally speaking, I do think that this one uh, very likely tests down around, you know, kind of around your December lows uh, overall. Um, let's see, I'm actually going to get rid of all this chart right here. Long term, though. Now, long term is starting to lose its structure here, and you do have one, two, three drives of bearish divert. And so, yeah, minimum around last week's low. If things really start to fall apart, like let's say Bitcoin trades down at 30,000 bucks, probably looking at this one down around about 20 to 19 and a half cents. And th these are higher term time frames here, obviously. So it's not relevant for like right now, or at least I think not right now. And short term, I would call a nice bounce with any sort of a closure above 37 cents, even on a hourly, probably with targets back up to towards the low 40s. Um, so, you know, always have to have those conditions. But uh, again, daily BBWP, this is this is the one right here, man. I want to see this one get up at minimum 90 percentile and the higher, the better. We'll, we'll add more confidence um, for right now. I'm, I'm kind of looking for continuation right here uh, for what it's worth. Uh, Zeko says, hey, man, what's up, brother? Can you check out OMI? I think we did that one earlier. Uh, let me just double check here. Um, I guess Ascendex, Ascendex, uh, daily and four. Yeah, I remember we did this one. Um, is actually has one of the better charts to be fair. Short term, do I think it trades back down? I mean, very easily could. Uh, it's actually showing relative strength right now, even on the four hour. Even the hourly is actually popping back. This is fucking bizarre, man. There must be something else going on in this thing. But uh, I think I think earlier when I looked at this one, I was looking at a short term downside move around uh, six tenths of a cent or so. I still might see that, but ultimately this one's holding up relatively well. I'm bullish on this one as long as you're above about 5.3 tenths of a cent. In this case, uh, could very easily come back down and test around there. I would think it's maybe even in some cases a little bit likely, but uh, I don't get bearish on this thing until you actually break below that last that last major low. Um, one of the more interesting charts we've seen today, there is one that actually looked slightly better, but this would be among the best. Um, uh, Simply Gain says, "Read. Did you read Arthur's blog about global market uh, back in November? No, I actually haven't been keeping up with him. Um, but he usually has some really, really uh, interesting insights. Um, you know, and for all the hate that he gets, his writing is incredibly good. Um, so I will actually go back and read that, assuming that I already haven't. But I don't believe I don't believe I has have." I'm also reading a lot of comments here that it's totally safe uh, for a holiday here in Dubai. Okay, are you are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Elsa's like, yes, they are sure. Uh, <laughs> all right, fair enough, man, fair enough. I think that's the end of the stream. My voice is sufficiently wrecked yet again, but that's okay. It's for good purpose, for good reason. You know, kind of wrapping up my thoughts on this one. Uh, we actually, do we have, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we will have hidden bearish evidence on, on Bitcoin right here as well, uh, between this high, which was all the way up at 39.3, and this this potential high being put in right here. That'll be confirmed with any sort of a closure below this little short-term low, which is on an hourly, easier to be seen at about 34,800 or so. 
hourly has already shown a hidden bearish divergence and turning down. Probably another uh, probably another run at the lows. I guess the hoping is that the run at the lows uh, begets itself a bit of a bounce and then takes out the short-term range highs, which is 37, even on an hourly closure. And then I would be looking for the next move, you know, a little bit more than $2,000 to the upside and come back to it after that and re size it. Again, we have a big, 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 big economic um, uh, event on Wednesday. As always, whenever Jay Powell starts to talk, markets will move. And, uh, and I suspect that this is all just a preparation for that. Per speaking, I do think that that's going to be a bounce event, but the question is how far down do we go before then? Um, so I think I'll leave things right there. I want to wish everyone well. Please stay safe in these markets right now. Um, there is a lot of opportunity abound as always, but uh, always remember that if you don't have necessarily a good idea or if you're not confident, cash is a position. It is a decision and it's sometimes it is the best decision. And especially if you don't have a plan working around whatever the hell you're trying to do, that is most likely the right decision for yourself as well. Um, capital preservation during these times is the name of the game. Okay, cool, sirs and zers. Uh, Chris Biolo says SPS is falling apart. Uh, talking about futures, let me just quickly check this one out. Um, not really, or at least I don't see it yet. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's doing what it's been doing, but I don't think it's falling apart just yet. I do think it's going to come back down here, to be fair. So I do think you're going to be right, but uh, I don't, I, I don't see anything like that we haven't seen from this morning's uh, stream just yet. Um, all right, cool. I'm going to be signing off right there. Wish you all well. We'll be back on later, uh, tomorrow that is, of course. And uh, with that said, take care. Write it, code it, name it, tweet it, mine it, stack it, live it, dream it, post it, scan it, charge it, send it, do it, do it, and receive it. Trade it, buy it, sell it, store it, run it, list it, first rename it. Crypto logic. Crypto logic. Pump it, hack it, lose it, dump it, sell it, ditch it, fix our pitch it, copy, paste it, nudge it.